Is a calorie a calorie? It's something that I've talked about before. It's something that a lot of people ask me. And there's one particular question that comes to mind that I want to address in this video. But before I get to that question, I want to introduce a good friend of mine, Joe Anderson, who's a PhD in chemical engineering and has also published over 40 peer reviewed articles in the world of pulmonary science. And he is an expert in ketosis and also an expert in how we measure ketones. Um, but I think you're a good person to really talk to about the world of calories. Sure, yeah, I'd, I'd like to. So the question that I want to bring to mind is that of, is a calorie a calorie? And what someone brought up to me was, if someone were to increase their calories, but be on a ketogenic diet, would they still lose as much weight as someone that was just on a calorie restrictive diet? So in other words, if you're eating the right kind of foods, can you get away with eating more calories? Does calories in versus calories out really matter? And I want to turn it to you just briefly, just kind of a big picture on this, on, on what your take is on that. And then I've got some ideas that I want to bounce off you too. Yeah, that's great. And I think kind of the short of it is calories in, calories out do matter. But the nuance piece is it depends on what calories you're putting in, right? Uh, if you put in calories like sugar and you have less sugar calories than you're, than you're burning, then that deficit, so the difference between how much you're bringing in and how much you need, is going to be subsidized by your stored body fat, right? The problem with that is how long can you do that for? And it may be for a month, it may be for a couple months, but you're eventually going to burn out. And that's why those calorie restriction diets are very difficult. So what you really want to do is have good calories coming in. And I know a lot of people will go on a diet, <clears throat> and the first thing people will say is eat healthy foods. And a lot of times that, the reason that works is you're cutting out all those processed junk foods. Mm -hmm. So once again, the type of calorie is important. If you can get rid of foods that cause your body to have dysfunction, and it may be hormonal dysfunction, it may be processing dysfunction, and replace those with good calories, that's a step in the right direction. Then the second piece, along with that, once again, the nuance piece, is if you're on a high fat, low sugar diet, uh, one of the nice pieces with that is it allows you to regulate how much you want to bring in, right? It satiates your appetite. So you may not overeat with a high fat, very low sugar diet. And that's gonna, once again, kind of balance out your calories in, calories out. I actually, uh, it's funny you say that. I just did a video yesterday, so it's fresh in my mind about, you know, CCK, cholecystokinin, and how ketosis affects that. And I don't wanna go into a lot of detail on that, but basically CCK is a hormone that is released, uh, especially when you're in ketosis, that does cause you to be satiated. And so a calorie is not always a calorie, but one thing that I wanna really address in this, and we were talking about this before the video and what actually spawned this video to begin with, was the fact of truly finding where your baseline caloric needs are is extremely, extremely difficult. So to be able to say that you need to be in a calorie deficit, although that's true because simple thermodynamics do apply, you do need to, yes, technically be consuming less calories, to, in order to lose weight, we don't really know what less calories is and it can change from day to day because we have so many different external influencing factors. We have you know, things like insulin that will definitely influence other hormones. We have cortisol, we have testosterone, we have estrogen, we have our moods, we have heat, we have cool. We can't ever determine exactly where we are calorically, where we need to be. Right, it's an average measurement and it, it's measured like you said, it's probably varying every day, and it depends on the condition. So when you do one of those measurements, it's, it's a measurement that's taken over about 30 minutes in a resting position in a bed. Um, but like you said, how does that change you know, hour by hour, minute by minute, is, is somewhat unknown. So there is an individualized piece of that that's certainly going to change. The other piece that I want to go back to is this calories in, calories out. And the specific types of calories, you also have to remember to add to that list is you have different types of fat, right? You have the white adipose tissue, you have the brown adipose tissue. So your brown adipose tissue can be kind of, the, the use of fat in the brown adipose tissue can be separate from energy generation, meaning it's not creating energy for your body to use, it's just creating heat. So if you have a lot of that tissue and it's just simply creating heat, burning up calories, how does that affect your basal metabolic rate? 
That is a tremendous point. And I'm going to back up to make sure that that's explained well, because that's extremely, extremely good. And that's, yeah, what he mentions about brown fat and, and white fat. You have two different kinds of fat in your body, in case you didn't know. Brown fat is there just to essentially keep you warm. And that means that the calories that are feeding that brown fat are feeding the fat to keep you warm. It's just being burned. It's not necessarily being burned for energy. Then you have the white fat. Now there's you know people that say one is bad and one is good. In reality, they're both neutral. They both have their place. But if you have more brown fat, then you're in a position to definitely just burn for heat. That's correct, yeah, yeah. So, and that's, that's, that's a piece going back to it. Calories in, calories out, it really depends on what the calories are. And one more thing too, I mean, like we talked about also is what that calorie influences can do a lot of different things. So like with uh, ketosis, let's say for example, you consume a fat calorie that comes from MCTs. Well, if you are already in somewhat of a state of ketosis, then that fat calorie that comes from MCTs is going to elicit, it's going to be a catalyst for more energy, which is going to yield more fat burning, it's going to yield more energy expenditure. So there's so many varying factors that we can look at, and you know, then you take a look at that same calorie coming from a couple grams of sugar or something like that. Whole different ballgame. Now you're triggering an insulin response, opening the cell doorway to store fat, but it doesn't change the fact that, sure, if you want to lose weight, you should be in lower calories. Right. Right. That's exactly it. Yep. Well, I mean, having you here, I mean, you're, you're an expert, you are uh, someone that's on the team with, with Level, and in case you guys don't know what Level is, Level is a way that you can measure your breath acetone levels to determine if you're in a fat burning state. You can learn a little bit more about Level by clicking on the link and checking them out, but I wanted to take advantage of having uh, Dr. Joe Anderson here to be able to talk a little bit more about ketosis, talk a little bit more about fat burning, and whether or not you are in a fat burning state. So, thanks, Joe. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>